As financial institutions launch pilots exploring the use of generative AI, they must consider how to ensure this technology is working for them in a way that's open, trusted, targeted and empowering. So how can banks and other financial institutions harness the power of generative AI and what should be their top considerations as they experiment with this powerful emerging technology? I'm delighted to say we're joined now by John Digan, a distinguished engineer and general manager of global financial services at IBM to explore these issues further. Welcome to, to Cyboss TV. Nice to see you both, Janella and Johnny. Thank you for having me on. It is great to have you. Uh, let's get straight into it, shall we? Tell us the state of AI and generative, uh, generative AI in the banking industry today. So banks and financial services firms have been doing AI for a very long time already. Generative AI, of course, is new, but AI has been used to build virtual assistants, perform decision making and risk functions for many, many years. But there have been a ton of challenges around traditional AI, machine learning and deep learning. And typically that's the, the challenge that firms have to scale their development and production efforts. And so generative AI has changed all of that by simplifying the way that firms can create AI models and deploy those into productions. And that's the most exciting shift. Of course, this is all massively popularized by consumer AI that we've all been talking about every day for months. Mm. And I understand IBM conducted a survey of CEOs across all industry to get their thoughts on AI and, and generative AI. What were the key findings from that survey? Uh, what are industry leaders, how are they feeling? Yes, that was our CEO survey, decision making in the age of AI. And although we surveyed uh, thousands of CEOs, hundreds of those were from financial services. So it's incredibly important that we have the CEO perspective. Uh, of those CEOs, 40% believe right away that generative AI is going to be the source of huge financial advantage for those that adopt it. And 75% believed that the early movers will gain the most advantage. So that's very indicative of how many firms will get started. Additionally, uh, they were focused on three top use cases. The most important one, as rated by over 40% of the CEO respondents, was customer care and customer service and how generative AI will help that. Um, and second uh, was talent, third, security. Mm -hmm. And so CEOs and their organizations have a clear view about how they want to move forward with generative AI. Of course, financial services present specific needs around the need for trust and explainability uh, and the ability to use AI in a regulatory construct. And so that means that AI can't hallucinate, it can't provide wrong answers. And th therefore, we believe at IBM that AI, consumer grade AI, probably doesn't meet the needs of most regulated financial services firms. And that's where we've sought to enter the marketplace in a way that is specifically oriented towards our enterprise clients, their needs and their regulators. Mm. Could you talk us through some of these, these more compelling use cases of generative AI as banks grapple to, 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 to find a way to employ it? Yes, Johnny. So I mentioned first customer care. And what that essentially means that the first way of knowing, uh, of seeing that is through virtual assistants. The, the conventional way of training a, a virtual assistant in the past was all about identifying the intents or the actions that a customer wanted to, wanted to perform in working with a virtual assistant. So for example, asking the question, what's my balance? Or can I send a payment? All of that required very specific and labor intensive, technology intensive training upfront because you had to think through everything that a client or customer might want to do. Mm. When we apply generative AI to a virtual assistant, instead of training everything up front, we can provide a trusted body of knowledge such as the customer procedures for the bank and use that to generate 
trusted answers. So customer care is the first case. In the case of employee productivity, we think about all of the manual processes and data gathering processes that employees and uh, the workforce of financial services firms have to do in preparing, for example, proposals or understanding regulations. And so generative AI can either summarize complex documents and explain the contents. So for example, pull out the obligations from a regulation and make those in such a way that they can be well understood. Or for example, build portfolio recommendations or create operational insights about payments flows uh, and the movement of money across the economy. Uh, last uh, of the three that I think about a lot is platform modernization and code modernization. Financial services firms around the world uh, every one of them has billions of lines of code, many of which are approaching 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And so it's essential that we help those firms find new ways to extend the investment in that code and extend the way that they can use it. And so generative AI can help understand code as it stands and help to modify that code and even rewrite it into well-formed Java, for example, which has never been possible until now without generative AI. IBM's, with our platform, the Watson Code Assistant, has really created something that's truly a breakthrough in understanding code and being able to use it in new ways. Can you talk a little bit about that, Watson X? You mentioned the, the idea that the generative AI platforms need to be different uh, for businesses than they are for consumers, and, and uh, IBM recently unveiled a, a Watson X. So can you just talk about the differentiating results and how it's designed specifically for uh, business versus consumer? Thank you, Janella. Yes, uh, so Watson X is IBM's enterprise AI platform for generative AI. It is built around four principles that we believe are differentiated across the industry. First is, it's an open platform. And so we recognize that everyone across the industry will create models. IBM will create models, other firms are creating models. And of course, uh, you know, people are building businesses around that. And the reason a, a platform needs to be open is because these models will innovate constantly over time. So no one firm will control models. A, a platform that's doing enterprise AI must be trusted. So a trusted platform where we can explain, uh, we can trust that the answers that we generate with AI are correct and we can explain equally how and why we generated that answer. Mm. We believe that enterprise AI and generative AI with Watson X must be targeted. And so targeted means we're not trying to be all things to all people. We're trying to serve our enterprise customers around the use cases that I explained previously. And last, we think that generative AI must be empowering. In other words, we're uplifting the workforce, we're uplifting the customers, we're uplifting the purpose of the business that we all do together. Watson X has three components. The Watson X AI, which is the AI studio in which we build, test, and deploy models. Watson X .data, which is an open data platform where we can store and warehouse data. Watson X is unique in that it's hybrid and uh, it can run anywhere. We don't force companies to bring their data to our cloud or someone else's cloud. We say no, our AI can run anywhere the data is, in any data center and in any cloud. That's hugely differentiated. Last part of Watson X is Watson X dot governance. That notion of how we ensure trust and how we explain trust and show, demonstrate to a regulator, to any kind of investigative body, this is how the AI generated an answer. And that makes, though that combination of capabilities makes IBM Watson X truly differentiated in the marketplace today. Well, so exciting. It is indeed. Technological change can often be a little bit scary uh, at times, but it seems like so much is happening. It's, it's a really exciting time over at IBM. Uh, John, thank you so much for your time on uh, Cybos TV. I hope you enjoy the rest of Cybos Toronto thank 2023. Uh, John Dagenham, Distinguished Engineer and General Manager, Global Financial Services at IBM. <laughs>